This is Scott Bachanson, Vice President for Cardinal Basketball Officials Association. Today we're going to show a training video on an end of game situation. This is a game between Trinity Christian and Westfield. Trinity Christian's in green, Westfield is in gold. Westfield is the stronger team, up by 15 at this point in the game, with about uh, a minute to go in the game. So I'm going to run through a couple of sequences of plays, and we're going to pause them as we go through because I want to just make sure that we are thinking about what's the right thing to do in this situation. So I'll just go ahead and push play here. What you're going to see is the thrower in, uh, number eight for green, is going to come around a screen and take a jump shot and flop, at which point we don't do anything. Our trail uh, here is witnessing this, and you can see his reaction. Okay. Hey, your trail just shakes his head. If the kid wants to fall down and end up being behind on defense, that's that's his prerogative. Uh, I will mute this as I talk through as we get on the court. So there's some things uh, that we have available to us in these kind of situations. Obviously, as you can see here, we're at 36 seconds to go in the game. Uh, it looks like 70 to 54. So the game's in, in hand. It's been decided. Um, you know, but I, I equate what we're getting ready to see as from a judgment standpoint, I don't necessarily think there will be anybody that would question uh, the result as far as from a rule standpoint. Okay, so... We'll play this through. I'll put the sound up so we can listen a little bit. And Okay. So if I rewind this back, what you'll see is number eight goes up for a jump shot. Clearly uh, flops to try to draw a foul. And our... Uh, trail official, uh, who's also our crew chief in this game, said, all right, I've had enough of that. That's two of these little flops, and we're not going to put up with any more and assess as a technical foul. So we'll play it again. Okay. So, you know, here's, here's what I would say in this situation. Just from a game management standpoint, the team's down 16. The kid is obviously... Um, you know, flopping and trying to draw a foul. Uh, and this could be considered unsporting. By the letter of the law in the rule book, could we call a technical foul? Yes. However, when I look at the different tools that we have in our toolbox, I think there are other opportunities um, instead of calling the technical foul here. I think there's a way that we can get our message across uh, to the coach uh, by talking to the coach, talking to the captain, uh, maybe going to a point where uh, you call a timeout and you walk over to the coach and you say, listen, I gave you a timeout instead of a technical foul because I want to let you know what your player did, let you have an opportunity to correct it. Now, the coach says, well, I don't want the timeout. I say, no problem. We'll give you the technical foul and we'll move on. That's, that's different. I think coaches, though, will appreciate the opportunity to be able to correct behavior like this. So instead... Uh, what we've done is we've taken a game which really hasn't had a lot of uh, negative going on, and we've done a very good job in this game. This crew, as I've watched up until this point, has done a, has done a fairly decent job considering the game they've had. I think the call selection has been good. I think the communication between the three will be good. But the only thing anyone's going to remember is that now we've thrown what we like to call shit into the game. So... By calling this technical foul with 29 seconds left or whatever it is by the time we get down to the other end, it just is a situation where we didn't need it. And I think that there's other ways to handle it. Okay, So uh, as I push play, you're going to hear the observer, uh, Dave McAndrew, uh, obviously recognizes what Mike is doing. And uh, they'll shoot the free throws. And one of the things I think you'll see is is Mike, after he reports it, he stays table side to tell the coach. Okay, now, here's what I'll tell you. If you're calling a technical foul on a player, then you need to be ready 
to be able to explain to the coach. Okay, Walking across the division line and, and blowing off steam only happens if you call it on the coach. If you're calling it on the player, then it is our responsibility to make sure the coach knows. Now, if you need a minute uh, to collect your thoughts, that's fine. But we're not going to put the ball back in play until you've had a chance to have a conversation with the coach. So, we'll just play this through. Oh, we've got the new rule enforced here. New, new rule enforcement alert. This is the new rule, ladies and gentlemen. Of being fake, being fouled. You hear about it? We just had an unsporting foul. Okay. So it's, it's obviously not a new rule change. Maybe it is for Dave and his glorious college career. Um, but one thing I was really trying to pay attention to here, uh, and if I back it up five seconds, maybe we can see it. You see that Mike is talking to the player now. Okay. So, uh, and, and I would say in this situation, um, you just go straight to the coach. You see the coach is over here waiting in the white shirt. Engaging the player here, you're just not going to win. Uh, you know, the kid's obviously uh, trying to draw a foul, and he's really embarrassed, uh, embarrassing himself. Uh, and we end up uh, putting ourselves in the soup here. But We just had an unsporting foul call on a player who just faked being fouled. Again. 29 seconds to go in the game. Uh, it's a 16-point game at this time. Better decisions obviously could be made. And talking to Mike, he uh, agrees. He's got uh, lots of tools in the tool bag and and probably picked the wrong one under the circumstances. Um, now, I will tell you this. If I've had a problem and I go by the coach and I say, listen, if eight's going to continue to flop, the next time it happens, we'll just give him a technical foul. I'm letting you know so you can fix it, and if you can't fix it, we will. And that's the conversation I would have had with the coach. Um, and then if it happens again, then I would call a technical foul because I've drawn the line in the sand. I'm giving the coach every opportunity to fix it, and then we don't have an issue. But in this situation, it's just a learning opportunity for everybody. What, what are you? I did not blow the whistle. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I think it's a new rule. It is not. That, let me say this. It's not for this level. Uh, it's new at the college level. It is new at the college level. We can assess a technical foul in women's collegiate basketball for someone faking a foul. So the end lesson here is there's other ways to fix this. There's other opportunities to address this and get better out of the situation. I, I always think about this in my games where something like this happens. Is there a way I could have gotten better out of the situation? Because I feel like if there's a, a, an avenue that we can go out and, and get that, then we're better off. The other thing, the other lesson I would say to officials in general is the coaches are going to want to have the last word. Okay. And uh, sometimes they're wrong, and that's okay. But from a standpoint of just communicating with the coaches, sometimes we just need to have a conversation a little bit differently. We need to have a little bit uh, different kind of focus, um, leave it rules-based, and let them have the last say and move on. There's, there's uh, times where we can be right by rule, but we're wrong by game management perspectives. So let that be a lesson to everyone. In this situation, by rule, Mike is correct in addressing and assessing the technical foul. But I, however, would feel that we would be better suited to look at a different way of handling this. So, uh, happy uh, happy hunting this this summer, and hopefully, we've all learned from this situation. Thank you.